everyone. Today I'm going to talk about this recently published paper by, written by Christy Ansys Group. So title is Extracellular Matrix Stiffness Control Cardiac Valve My Myofibrillar Blood Activation Through Epigenetic Remodeling. So the key point of this paper is, is how to integrate ATEC, ATEC sequencing and RNA sequencing to reveal some underlying mechanism. And then even though they try to find some strong evidence, something, but I feel like uh, they are not, they cannot 100% prove, but anyhow, they publish. So let's see step by step. So first, uh, already some people know about this cardiac valve myofibroblast, but as you, as you expect, the cardiac valve, they can, they are very important uh, anatomic structure. But sometimes, in pathologic manner, cardiac valve can be stiffened. And then it causes severe damage to heart. So, so based on this content, they try to study how this cardiac valve myofibroblast can be tuned by the different stiffness. Then, as you imagine, the cardiac valve consists of many fibroblasts. And then some of them, they are activated to myofibroblast, and then they can make more collagen structure, leading to stiffening of the tissue, and then cause cardiac valve pathologic condition. Okay. This kind of contents is revealed in this structure. So here, they culture the primary, primary gathered fibro uh, cardio cardiofibroblast on two different stiffness hydrogel. This hydrogel is made is made of PEG. So soft is around five kilopascal, which is similar to the health condition of the cardiac valve. Stiff is fifteen kilopascal, which is similar to the pathology condition of the cardiac valve. So when they culture primary, primary gathered cardiac fibroblasts on two different stiffness, as you see, soft, you can see few cells are positive of alpha SMA, which is marker of myofibroblast. But on stiff, uh, various cells are positive. So this is their quantification. Also, cell area will increase, and the nuclear area increase. And from the nuclear area increase, they expect somehow this cell can be activated. So they check these three markers. One is total how, the, how DNA is methylated using methylated lysine. And then total oscillation lysine. And then H3 oscillation. So from these three markers, as you expect, total oscillation, histotal oscillation is a marker of euchromatin structure. They are all highly expressed in stiff hydrogel. And as well, this, uh, we can simply imagine methylation is marker of uh, heterochromatin, but this heterochromatin marker also highly expressed in stiff hydrogel. But while they totally, the condensation factor is decreasing in stiff. So overall, condensation, chromatic condensation decrease and then methylation, total methylation increase, total isolation increase, but very significantly, and then among them, histotal isolation increase. So they expect that this cardiac fibroblast, they are activated on stiff hydrogen condition. So this is their figure one. After that, they want to know, oh, what is the difference of the epigenetic change? So they do ATIC sequencing. So three from soft, four from stiff. From PCA analysis, they reveal they are totally spaced each other groups. And then according to this uh, union peak analysis, this four stiff, three soft, they are clustered like that. And then when they analyze further uh, which kind of peaks are detected, so as you can see, this uh, brown color is related to the distal in intergenic. We, they mentioned that distal intergenic is well known for 
in answer in answer part. So most of the in answer part is revealed from soft and stiff differentiated expression peak. And then further, they want to know which kind of transcription factor is involved in two different stiffness. So when you look at the stiff, the well-known mechanical mechanic sensing transcription factor, SRF, and then YAPTAS, T, YAPTAS, one of the YAPTAS transcription factor, TAD, is highly detected, detected, and then SMAD as well. In, from the soft unregulated peaks, KRF is detected. As you know, KRF is uh, OSKM, one of the OSKM marker, which can maintain the, um, how can I say, flexibility of the cell. So here they mention KRF, why KRF is activated in soft, which means soft, the fibroblasts on the soft gel, they, are, they still want to maintain their flexibility. So they have this high unregulated KRF, KRF, KRF transcription factor. But this is their in silico study. They didn't prove anything about this, but except they only reveal this YAP expression. So when you look at uh, this uh, supplementary data, they check the YAP expression, how much of YAP is nuclear activated compared to cytoplasm. But like this little change, they can see. So soft around 1.2, stiff is around 1.3. But from this uh, supplementary data, they prove st stiff hydrogel they can activate the fibroblast from the well-known mechanical sensing transcription factor. Okay. After revealing this ATN sequencing, they want to integrate how this ATN sequencing data can be explained in terms of RNA sequencing transcription, uh, transcription manner. So from figure three, they do the RNA sequencing. So here, figure three, they do RNA sequencing uh, they reveal very much DEG, differentiated express, express gene from the red dot. And then from the stiff and soft, they are highly changed. So as you can see, this RNA sequencing, they can detect around 1,000, 2,000 DEG. But from AT sequencing, they only detected half of them, 800 and 1,000. And then they want to integrate them. So from the D, you can see how much, which kind of peaks, which kind of gene is detected from the unregulated RNA sequencing plus ATX sequencing. So here, why this number is decreasing from the 800 to 60? Because they exclude most of the this brown region. Yeah, most of them ATX sequencing maybe around 80% is consist of this distal intergenic, but here they mentioned that this intergenic, even though they have evidence to relate, relate to some uh, enhancer part, but most of them are not, no much of a meaning. So they exclude this 80%. So there's why active sequencing gene is very much decreasing here. So they analyze this co-activated gene from the RNA transcription manner as well as epigenetic change manner. So 21 gene from the soft, stiff, and then 15, 14 gene from the soft. So here, they geo, geo analysis from the stiff. So from the stiff, you can see there's an ectomycin structure enhanced, and then collagen content ECM, and actin binding. Most of them are related to the uh, which, which, is, which is very well known for stiff manner. And then further, they analyze this highly unregulated 21 genes from the RNA-seq, atx -seq, and then from in silico database, they correlate the fibrosis associate value. So they refer some one, one paper, they reveal that how, how many genes are related to, to, related to fibrosis? So this, this uh, circle, meaning, circle meaning is that how strongly they are related to the fibrosis. So most of the gene is highly related to the fibrosis, and then they are 
omnibulated by RNA sequencing in transcription manner and ATN sequencing in epigenetic manner. And then they analyze again deeply. So from the unregulated gene on soft hydrogel, unregulated gene on stiff hydrogel, especially soft hydrogel, they can detect the histone modification. Okay, and then unregulated gene, many ECM organization, late to the proliferation, and we can simply imagine how fibroblasts can be activated on stiff hydrogel. So from this histone modification GO, GO gene set, they analyze further stiff, soft and stiff. So interestingly, you, you can see from the soft, this uh, brown color means they are more activated. So let's say this is 100 gene later to the histone modification, but two thirds of the gene is highly unregulated from the soft. But one third is highly unregulated in the stiff. So this is a way, uh, maybe this is far away from their expectation, I think. So for confirming that, uh, which kind of histone modification occur from the stiff around 30 and then from the soft 80, most of them is related, not one single modification, but T-phosphorylation, ubiquitation, and T-isolation, isolation, many of them are related to it. So among this, um, this uh, around 100 gene related to the histone modification, they only select three. Third one is, as you know, one of the HDAC gene, histone deacylation. KDM is uh, methylation transferase, ah, uh, sorry, demethylase, demethylase gene. And then CREP is acetyltransferase. So, which means this is decreasing, this gene is related to decreasing isolation and decreasing methylation, increasing isolation, okay? But interestingly, decreasing isolation gene is hi highly unregulated in soft. And then increasing isolation also, highly unregulated in the soft. This is, con uh, the two genes is contradictory function, but still both of them, they are highly um, unregulated in the soft and then down-regulated down in the stiff. But t metalase doesn't change. So they look into more about the SART1 and CRIP from the next figure. And then they use inhibitor. This EX527 is, let's see, SART1 inhibitor, okay? So this SART1 is highly unregulated in soft, so they decrease this SART1 by this inhibitor. But still, alpha SMA doesn't change that much. Okay, and what is CBP30? CBP30 is a CREP inhibitor. CREP inhib when they treat the CREP inhibitor, suddenly alpha SMA is highly unregulated, even they are culture on the soft, similar to the stiff. Okay, so here they found this CREP is very important for regulating soft and stiff from the cardiofibroblast. So this is their quantification. As you see, uh, this SIRT1 inhibitor doesn't change, but CREP inhibitor, they show significant difference still on the soft. And then as well as alpha SMA, cell area also highly changed in the soft with the inhibitor. Okay, so here they mention this CREP is very important for regulating Determine, determining the soft and stiff behavior from the my uh, cardiofibroblast. And then here, and then they again tr treat this inhibitor. This is, as you can expect, this is CREP activator. So when they activate the CREP in stiff hydrogel, cause, as I told you, on those stiff gel, they are decreasing CREP level 
So they again increase the creep by this activator, and then they found out little decreasing of alpha sma intensity as well as cell area. So from the soft and then from the stiff, they, this creep is very key regulator to determine the behavior of the cardiofibroblast in terms of myofibroblast activation. And then, as you can expect, uh, this CTGF, MMP9, and CTC20, most of them are related to myofibroblast behavior as well as proliferator gene. So soft, soft plus creep inhibitor, steep, steep plus creep activator, they are increasing, decreasing, most of them, okay? So overall, myofibroblast behavior as well as proliferation can change depending on the creep gene activa activation. And then as a final outcome, this is really true from the tissue. So they collect this tissue from the human, aortic valve, from the health, con health human and the disease human. As you can see, this crap protein is highly expressed in health, which means normal condition, similar to the soft. But when they are stiffened from the pathological condition, disease, they are decreasing, all of them. So they prove this crap is very key factor for regulating pathologic manner of the cardiac valve. Now this is the end of this paper. And then let's see our uh, supplementary data. So they checked uh, five and 15, and then YAP, and also, and then they, from the, for proving YAP is really la related to, they treat the VP, which is YAP inhibitor. So from the stiff, they are decreasing the histoacylation. So they prove YAP, which is a well-known mechanical transduction factor is involved in this cardiofibroblast. And then next. Next, yeah, about the GO analysis. Yeah, this is the uh, same thing, which is already in our main figure. And then KR67, as you know, stiff gel, they can make the cell proliferative manner. So KR67 positive cell, highly increased in stiff. And then, yeah, this KDM6B is increasing. In this is dimethylase increasing here. So this is their, uh, which kind of concentration they use from the inhibitor. So they screen inhibitor concentration this manner. But actually, uh, here I feel like why histone isolation doesn't change, even though they treat uh, SART1 inhibitor and then this uh, CREP activator. So this is way unexpected result, as I expect. But anyhow, they show like that. I think when SART1 inhibitor treated, this should, should increasing. And then also this should change, but somehow they didn't change anything. So this is their quantification from the soft tip and inhibitor from CCP. And then yeah, another yeah, inhibitor screening from the cell number and alpha small number. Yeah, and then from the EDU, they also analyze this uh, SART1 inhibitor doesn't affect the proliferative manner, but creep activator, creep uh, deactivator, they are involved. So from this manner, I think uh, this end of this paper. So I feel like, uh, I feel they're struggling. Actually, this CREP, CREP gene is mostly related to the acetyl transferase, which means acetylation should increase. But here, this manner, yeah, they use CREP as a different content. So they try to describe this CREP is already well known on gene, on protein detected in the cardiac valve, but they cannot generalize this gene is, can be activated in another content like liver or skin. 
This gene is only related to the cardio cardio myofibril blast activation. Okay. Thank you.